All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and as part of the Rankin Technical College AWD 1111 class to be taught in the fall 2020 semester at Rankin, I've been going through a series of video presentations based on our textbook for the class, that textbook being Get Programming with Node.js by Jonathan Wexler, a Manning publication, and we're in Lesson 9 of Unit 2. And we're almost done. We've got about uh, three or four pages to go, maybe five pages, talking MVC. MVC is an acronym that stands for Model View Controller. Now, I'm going to, instead of doing it the way they show it here, I'm going to do it backwards. All right. If you think about it, with all the problems that we've been having with the world today, but if you'd imagine that um, sports came back. Okay, let's say that it is fall and sports come back. But they've decided that what they're going to do, they meaning, meaning the NFL or National Football League, is they're going to let the players come back, but they're not going to bring back officials. Okay, you can imagine the chaos that would arise. You know, did you catch that ball? Were you in bounds? Etc. Did you call a timeout? Well, why am I bringing that up? Because the controller is kind of like a referee in the model view controller. The author here calls it the glue between views and models. Typically what happens is a HTTP or HTTPS request comes in. And the controller or one of the controllers all right, whichever one that request is deemed towards figures out how that data should be processed. Typically, it'll involve it calling the correct model. Then the model will go off and do its thing, and it'll return that data back to the controller. The controller will then take that data and send it off to the appropriate view so it can be displayed back to the end user. So typically there, there shouldn't really be any direct communication between the model and the view. That's what the controller is for. So again, it acts kind of like a supervisor, a referee, whatever you want to call it. The models are classes that represent our data. All right. And typically they're going to hold our databases. The views are what gets rendered to the user. As it says, starting in the next unit, in units three and four, we'll learn about models and even how to create our own models. So the author says to follow the MVC design pattern, we have to move our callback functions to separate modules that reflect the purpose of these functions. Callback functions related to user account creation, user account deletion, user account changes should go into a file called userscontroller.js. Functions for routes that render the home page or other informational pages should go into the home controller.js. And this is by convention. So it says figure 9.2 shows the file structure that our application will follow. So you'll notice right now, if we take a look at what we have here, so I'm going to go into Express. I don't want example. I want Express Routes. This is what we have. Let me shrink this way the hay down. We've got our no, you know, we got our express routes. All right. And it's got our main.js. It's got our package.js. And it will soon have another file we can add right now. That's package.json. So we're going to come in here, we're going to add a new text document, which I'll immediately change to router 
Node.js. Now it's going to bing at me or beep at me and say basically I'm changing the I'm going to be coming in here and changing the uh, extension. Do you really want to do that? Yes, I do. So there's router. And I goofed up. I don't think I made it .js, but I will. .js. There we go. So we now have that empty router file. Let's, while we're in here, let's do the rest of this. So we now have this. We've got these three files. Let's make a public folder. What you're starting to see is how these applications are laid out. So under public, we're going to make three other folders. And we're going to make, under public now, we're going to make an images folder. We're going to make a JS folder. That is for our client side, not our server side, JavaScript. And we're going to make a CSS folder. All right, so now we've got all of this. Now let's make a views folder. All right, there's our views folder. And inside of there, we're going to make, well, let's open it. So inside of there, we're going to make a new text document, and that will be our index.html file. All right, so that's done. We've got this, we've got this, we've got this. All right, then we will come in next, and we will make a controllers folder. And inside of that controllers folder, we will make a new file. That is called homecontroller.js. And then finally, even though we're not going to use it in this chapter, we'll make another folder that we'll call models. Why am I showing you all this? Not just because of this, but what I want to show you when you look here is what do we now have? We have model, view, controller, architecture. All right. So as it says, this new directory structure is mindful of your application's MVC design pattern. Each folder organizes code based on functionality. That's exactly what we want to do. So let's see if we can go through these steps that are on pages 102, 103, and 104. And that pretty much will finish this chapter. All right, one more thing I want to show you, and then we will call it a chapter. So create a controllers folder within your project. I did that. Create a home controller within that. I did that. Require your home controller file fit into the application by adding this to the top of what I've called index.js. So let's open up. I think we have index.js open already. There it is. And up at the top here now, we're going to add this. Whoops. Right there. And what is that saying? That's saying that we're going to have something, that a home controller, that's going to be at the current level we're at right now. All right. But there'll be a controllers folder underneath that, and it will be called home controller. Note we don't have a .js on there. Move your route callback functions to the home controller and add them to that module's export. So to do this, to use this right here, this is what they're saying. Step one, the request is sent to the server where it's first handled by the event loop and the request handlers. So that's our REQ object. ExpressJS and its route handle requests and determine whether to process the request further or just immediately send back a response. 
A specific request may require interaction with application models, with a database layer, or with something else. Finally, data is sent back to the client, often through browser views generated with the help of templating engines, which we're going to start covering soon. All right. In fact, Chapter 10 is entitled Connecting Views with Templates. Your code to respond with a vegetable parameter can move to your home controller as shown in 9.6. In the home controller, you assign exports, all right, exports dot send rec param to the callback function. This, as it says, is a variable name. Remember, one of the things that you can do in JavaScript is, is you can use functions as though they're variables. All right, so you can choose your own name that describes the function. This is fine. Let's grab that. Copy that. We're going to put this into our home controller. which is currently empty. All right, we move this, tab these both over. There we go. Same thing that we had done before. All right, and of course, let's save. Back in main.js, change the route to look like the next listing. When a request is made to this path, the function assigned to send rec param right here in the home controller is run. So let's go back here, go back to our, we don't need that anymore, period, to our index file. All right, and let's just pull this, put it up here, and now in here, we're going to add that app get. So that app get that's right there is going to call the home controller and it's going to be calling the send request param function in there. And that send request param function should be handling, oops, sorry, should be handling this. So bottom line is you'll notice this hello from the home page, etc. We don't want any of this that in there anymore. So let's just get rid of this and this. Now the whole thing is commented out. So the only things we have in here now, all right, I like to keep them in here for just, just so that I'm able to see what we've gone through. The only thing though that's really in here is this right there and the fact that we're listing on port 3000. All right, but if we come in here, if we go back now, and we have to stop the run and start the run again. All right, and if we come back here again, and I'm even going to just close this and start a new one, and we say HTTP colon slash slash, we don't need the HTTP colon, localhost colon 3000 slash slash items slash broccoli and it works the key takeaway from this is we are now calling, we are now calling this stuff, all right, from, we are calling this, 
this from our controller. All right, that's the key takeaway right here. All right, I've got just a couple more minutes worth of material to present here. So we did this, we restarted, okay? In the next lesson, the author will discuss how to serve views and assets, and views and assets are going to be our HTML files, our CSS files, our images, and our client-side JavaScript. Now, the author says here, installing and using Express Generator. We're going to do this. It says, as you continue to evolve your Express.js application, you adhere to, specific, to a specific file structure. You have many ways to construct your application. To jumpstart, you can use a package that's called Express Generator, which provides boilerplate code for your application. All right. <clears throat> It says, this tool offers scaffolding, which is pre-built stuff, so to speak. To install the package, use the global flag with npm install command. Enter the following command in your terminal. All right. Now, I don't, maybe, maybe what I'm about to show you I shouldn't be doing, but I'm going to try it anyway. That is this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here. I have not tried this before, but I'm going to come back to here. I'm going to grab everything almost that we have, and I'm going to put it into a folder called temp. I'm going to stick in there our controllers, our models. And I think I spelled models wrong there, didn't I? So our controllers, I want to put in temp. Our models, I want to put in temp. That's empty, so it shouldn't matter. Our public, I'm going to want to put into temp. Our views, I'm going to want to put into temp. And I'm even going to take router.js and I'm going to put it into temp. So you'll notice what's left is the node modules, all right, our index file, package.json, and package lock. I'm going to open up the index file. I'm going to take everything that's in it and comment the whole shebang. Everything is now commented out that's in there. There. Everything is now commented out. It's all green. And I'm going to try to run this express generator to show you what happens when we do this. All right? Kind of cool because it's going to do a lot of stuff for us. So we want npm install express express dash generator minus G. Okay, I'm going to copy that just so I don't screw it up. So, npm install express dash generator dash G. It says when the package is installed, you can create a new project by entering Express and the project name in the window. If your project is called this, what, what, let's use what they did. That's even better. When the package is installed, so let's just stop this. And let's put this in. We're installing it with a minus G flag, which means it's globally accessible. For lack of better words, we're installing it on the machine. I wish I would have done that from the desktop, but that's fine. Hopefully it'll still be all right. All right. 
create a new project by entering Express and the project name in a new terminal window. Okay, so Express Generation Generator. Now it's created a bunch of stuff for us. So let's look. There should be a new folder in here that's called Generation Generator. Let's look and see if indeed that's the case. And there's Generation Generator. You'll notice that it's got a bin folder, a public folder, which has in it images, JavaScripts, style sheets. The names are a little different. There's a routes folder that has an index and a users. There is a views folder that has in it an error.jade, an index.jade, and a layout.jade. And it's got an app.js, which is already pre-populated with a lot of stuff. So what I want to do is, and I know this is getting a lot longer than I wanted it to be, 2150, but let's just finish this quickly up. So I'm going to do a CD to generation generator. All right, node. Not what it was called. App.js. All right. Now it's giving me. It's telling me it can't find some errors. And I'm sorry about that. I should have added that, but that's okay. What I want you to understand is it builds what's called a scaffolding or a framework. All right. It, the, the author doesn't use that in here. The author recommends you don't use it because you're just learning how. But after you're more experienced, all right, it's a great tool to get you up and running. All right. What is the role of controllers in MVC? Controllers are responsible for processing data. They communicate directly with the model and with the view. They're a go-between or whatever you want to call it. So in this lesson, we learned how to build routes and middleware functions in Express. We used middleware functions to work with Express in analyzing the body content. At the end, we delved into the world of MVC. All right. So in the next lesson, the lesson rather, we're going to go into views layouts, talk a little bit about partials, and a few other things. Be back with that shortly.